Thank you, Ms. Everdyke and members of the senior band. Great job. Members of the Board of Education, fellow administrators, staff, members, parents, friends, relatives, and graduates. Welcome to the 132nd commencement exercises at Granville Central School. One thing that's nice about being outside on such a lovely day is I do not have to point the exits to you. <coughs> Profile of our graduate class is as, uh, is as follows. 73 graduates in the class. There are 10 advanced regents diplomas with honors, 17 advanced regents, three regents diplomas with honors, 33 regents diplomas, five local diplomas, and five students will receive career development and occupational diplomas. 13 members of this class are members of the National Honor Society, and six members are National Technical Honor Society members. 44 of our students plan to go on to two or four year colleges, 20 plan to enter the workforce, and we have four that have enlisted in the military, and four will be attending upward bound programs. Today we are gathered to honor the 73 graduates who comprise the class of 2018 at Granville Central School. Their 13 year journey to achieve this distinction has not been an easy one. In fact, one out of every five students who enter grade nine do not graduate within four years. In this particular class, we had 80 students entering grade nine four years ago and 73 graduating four years later. So our graduation rate for this class is around 90%, which is excellent because countywide and statewide, it's, it's closer to 80%. Usually 80 is the goal, and this class has done much better than that. These students also had to pass five state regents examinations and obtain 22 units of credit in order to participate in today's ceremony. These are not easy tasks and they require a lot of hard work, good attendance, <coughs> self-motivation, and parental support. In addition to these attributes, our students have had to learn to get along with others, be good problem solvers, be creative, and be proficient in the use of technology. Many of our students who have participated in co-curricular and extracurricular activities have had to learn to budget their time spent on these activities and with academics. Some of our students have amassed between 15 and 30 credits towards college by taking AP and SUPA courses. These efforts will decrease the overall cost for their post-secondary education and better prepare them for the next stages in their education. Our CTE students who are in more than 12 programs offered by our local BOCES they had to put hundreds of hours of time into their prospective programs of study in order to acquire the certifications that are, that are required for these programs. Most of these students will join the workforce as positive contributors to our communities soon after graduation. So you can see today is truly a day to honor our graduates for their hard work and to celebrate these lifelong achievements at Granville Central School. On a personal note, I would like to thank our graduates for their cooperation during the school year and for the great examples that they have set for our younger students this year. I asked them to do this in September when we first met, and they more than delivered on what I asked them to do. They have been positive role models for our underclassmen. They have also represented themselves and Granville well in the many school activities that they have participated this year, both on and off campus. We continuously hear about the excellent behavior of our seniors and outside, from outside sources. They are a wonderful group of young men and young women and will be sorely missed by us. Congratulations to the class of 2018. We are all very proud of you and your accomplishments and we look forward to hearing great things about you in the future. Thank you. At this time, Ms. Everdyke and the senior band will be giving us a, a selection.
Thank you, Ms. Everdyke and members of the Senior BIM. Great job. At this time, I would like to introduce Elizabeth Hicks to deliver the salutary address. Good evening, everyone. I, like the rest of my peers, have learned a lot during our four years of high school. Things like how Mr. Aubrey's relationship with his wife is the cutest thing you've ever heard of, or like how Bromley once killed a fox with a shovel. <laughs> Regardless, we have learned not only a lot about school subject matter or about the tricks of surviving high school, but also about one another and the tricks of surviving life in general. Many of us have grown up with one another. We've been with each other through the best and worst parts of each person's life. We've been there for everyone's milestones. We've been there through it all. I remember from kindergarten when Jake went to the bathroom with the door wide open, to when we first saw his armpit hair sticking out of his shirt in fifth grade, to now having grown his hair out into a long and luscious mane. I think something that all of us are able to hold on to is that the people with whom we are graduating, the teachers who supported us, the parents who did everything for us, those are the people who have shaped us into who we are today. None of us would be the same without those who went through high school with us because those people have taught us lessons that we will carry with us forever. However, it is that inevitable time to let go of and move on from all the familiarities of our life. It is time for us to go our separate ways and to grow into the adults we are meant to become. At some point, I catch myself wishing away the time I have left here with these people. At other points, hugging them so tightly, wishing that hug will somehow make an imprint on that person in a way that will never allow us to be separated at heart. But just as each and every one of us have grown into the beautiful people we are now, we must continue to grow and continue to learn. We have exhausted the time we have had to learn from each other. Therefore, to continue to bloom and flourish, we must gain new experiences and learn from new people. As many of you know, I love Grey's Anatomy a lot. So, in the words of Meredith Grey, letting go is the easy part. It's the moving on that's painful. So sometimes we fight it, trying to keep things the same. Things can't stay the same, though. At some point, you just have to let go. Move on because no matter how painful it is, it is the only way we grow. 
We all generally describe graduation as bittersweet, as the end of something wonderful, but the beginning of something great. It is the balance of this feeling that should reflect the balance we wish to instill in our lives. <coughs> Everyone sitting here today has experienced life-altering events. Some may have tested our ability to keep going, to strive to find happiness again, while others may have plastered a permanent smile on our face and a happy memory in our mind. Nevertheless, balance of emotion, balance of one's dedication, balance of one time, one's time, and balance of one's self, they are all more important than any of us consider them. As Rupi Kaur said in her book, The Sun and Her Flowers, I learned everything is temporary. Moments, feelings, people, flowers. I learned things come in twos, life and death, pain and joy, salt and sugar, me and you. It is the balance of the universe. We must learn to focus on warm energy, always. Soak our limbs in it and become better lovers to the world. For if we can't learn to be kind to one another, how will we ever learn to be kind to the most desperate parts of ourselves? So, we must remember that with the bad will come the good again. That we must be there for ourselves if we are going to be there for one another. And that life will always present its beauty even in the center of a storm. We've talked about moving on from the past, finding balance in the present, but what about the future? The one word everyone should think of when they consider their future is inspiration. Yeah, I know, it's pretty cliche of me, but just hear me out. Throughout our time in high school and growing up in this town, we have been supported by our families, our teachers, and our friends. But what we fail to recognize is how much they have influenced the people we have become and who are now leaving this part of our life. We have been inspired by all of those around us. They have shaped us into who we are. They make up a piece of who we are. So, moving forward in life, it is important that we find new inspirations because this world is a whole lot bigger than Granville High School. We have to find these new influences and motivations to grow into who we want to be. I always used to comment how I felt continuously inspired to seek happiness in every part of my life. But what I didn't realize is that we lose out on so much of that happiness when we are looking for it. That we have so much already to be thankful for and happy about. It is growth we should strive for, not more to be happy about or more to be thankful for. Again, many of you know Beyonce is a pretty big role model of mine. So I try my best to live by these words of hers, and as should all of you. Be healthy and take care of yourself, but be happy with the beautiful things that make you, you. As we grow and find our new inspirations and ambitions, we will in turn become inspirations for other people. We already have inspired each other, but the depths of the people we inspire will grow as well. We have to be strong enough to assume that power and use it to help others grow in a positive direction. One of my favorite Pretty Little Liars quotes reads, the bolder the move, the less anyone questions it. <coughs> so be bold enough to grow into who you want to be. Be bold enough to inspire others. Be bold enough to find balance in your life. And be bold enough to confidently move on from high school and into the rest of your life. In case you hadn't noticed, I integrated many different inspirations into my speech. From Bromley to Jake to Grey's Anatomy to Rupi Cower to Pretty Little Liars to Beyonce, I could have not delivered this speech without my own inspirations. These being my individual inspirations are a part of what make me unique and special. The class of 2018 has been made aware of just how special it is. About how its rare cohesiveness and spirited creative personality always made sure to make its mark on this school. We've often commented how so many teachers have left after having us. This could have been because we were too much to handle, therefore they had to get out while they could, but we like to think of it more as they knew it didn't get any better than us. I know this class is a part of my life that I will cherish forever because each and every one of you really are special and really have inspired me. And in closing, in the wise words of Winnie the Pooh, how lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Thank you and congrats to the class of 2018. We survived and now it's our time to grow. I would now like to invite my fellow classmates who are singing our senior song selection to join me on the risers.
Thank you, Elizabeth. It was a great speech. And I'd also like to thank um, Mr. Jeffrey G. and members of the Senior Class Chorus. At this time, the class officers will come forward to give some presentations <coughs> to various people. Good evening. My name is Alex Birchmore and I'm the secretary of the class of 2018. Working in a school can be a difficult task, yet it is one of the most important roles in society. Our administrators and board members represent our community and face complex and demanding challenges daily. They truly make a difference every day. Our board members and administrators spend a countless amount of hours studying complex issues such as student achievement, meeting with educational experts, parents and students, and attending school events. They are responsible for the <coughs> academic success seen throughout our schools. We are so fortunate to have exceptionally talented, incredibly dedicated people leading our district. All of their actions are based on what is best for all students. Their service ensures that decisions about our schools are made by the people who are most familiar with the needs of our community. With that being said, on behalf of the class of 2018, I would like to thank all the administration and Board of Education members for creating conditions in our school that help all of our staff and students succeed. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brooke Perry. And I'm Mercedes Green. And we are the co-vice presidents of the class of 2018. I'm sure we can all still picture our first day of kindergarten, walking up to the door terrified. It wasn't until our parents released the grip of our arms around their leg that we began to cry. Not everyone was a crier, but I can tell you I was. School was this foreign thing at the time that was gonna take some time to get used to. However, our parents made it a little bit easier. As we grew older, school went on all the way up to the first day of high school, which I'm sure we can all remember, Everyone's stress level skyrocketed. <coughs> However, the occasional how are you texts or phone calls from our parents made it all worth the while. They comforted us and made us feel welcomed without even being there. At some point, that first day turned into our last day, which will soon turn into our first day again, but this time at college. We cannot thank you enough for helping us with our futures, for giving us a chance to pursue our dreams and be independent. There might be some bumps, but we know you'll be right there to help us over them. So, thank you moms, dads, grandmas, anyone that was out there supporting our class throughout our long and sometimes strenuous journey. Looking out into the bleachers in the midst of a volleyball game to see a smiling face, or glancing over as I'm racing down the field to see my parents cheering on the sideline was the best feeling. Thank you for letting us have birthday parties, summer get-togethers, anything to keep us close but our friendships closer. Thanks for being our audience as we practice the presentation or staying up late with us working on homework that should have been started weeks ago. Thanks for never giving up on us, continuing to love us through those difficult teenage years, and for being the best friends that we will ever make in our lifetime. To the parents and guardians, you're not just role models, family, supporters, and friends, but you're the reason we're all here. I'm Lily Hahn, and I'm Libby Hicks, and we are the co-presidents of the class of 2018. To be a teacher takes a special kind of person, a person that can express a love that's different than all others, a love that will allow you to take hands, open minds, touch hearts, and change lives. The teachers that love teaching are the ones that teach us children to love learning. Throughout our school career, we have all grown various relationships with various teachers. We find ourselves interacting with a lot of these special people outside of the classroom. Some of them fill roles as our coaches and others serve as friends. <coughs> Regardless, teachers play a huge role in shaping us into the young adults we are today. Some of the teachers who have impacted our class have given us important things to remember them by. 
We will never forget how Mr. Wheeler's sarcastic jokes and supportive, inspiring conversations helped make the long school days feel just a little shorter. How Miss Becker's loud and obnoxious laugh pierced our ears but never failed to make us smile. How Mr. Cozy's random YouTube clips and stored snacks made us question what was going on but always gave us the energy to finish out the day. How Mrs. Smith allowed our office to become a place of reprieve. How Mrs. Colombo would make everything that was supposed to be awkward to talk about seem like something you could have daily conversations about. And how Mr. Lambert kept an endless supply of various stuffed animals that all had different meanings. Nevertheless, you can tell just how special these teachers are and how much they've impacted our time at Granville High School. Also, we would like to recognize that we know this place could not possibly function without all of the support staff. We all know they are the ones that really make this place work. We've often been told that we have a remarkable class, but we owe it to our teachers. The support that is shown to all of the students is something to be proud of. The knowledge instilled within us is something that we will all carry with us throughout our lives. On behalf of the class of 2018, we would like to thank the teachers. We couldn't have done it without you. G, the treasurer of the class of 2018. As you may have noticed, our class officer team is somewhat larger than your typical four people. We have six. Yet truthfully, our team is even larger than these six young women you see. It is in fact eight women, including our advisors, Mrs. Palmer and Ms. Cadella. My favorite memory of Mrs. Palmer and Ms. Cadella is the time when I saw them sitting on Point Pleasant Beach, enjoying the senior trip that they helped us orchestrate. Minutes after I saw them sitting there, Ms. Cadella sent a selfie to her chaperone group to make sure they were alive and well. A selfie complete with a sunny smile and a big thumbs up. That selfie represents the personality of both of our advisors, positive, encouraging, and always willing to help. The class officers are truly indebted to you two, Mrs. Palmer and Ms. Cadella. Without your help, we could not have done half of what we did this past year. You have tirelessly presided over our meetings offering countless new ideas and lending a helping hand in any way possible. I, as treasurer, am especially thankful for all the help I received from the two of you when counting money, taking inventory, and filling out the many receipt and disbursement slips. On behalf of the class officers and the class of 2018, thank you for helping to make our senior year fast-paced, memorable, and so much fun. We would now like to present two gifts from the class of 2018. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jake Vladeka. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight and supporting all of the gra uh, graduates of the class of 2018. Recently, we, as a collective class, have been honored for our hard work, dedication, and our ability to get the job done right throughout our high school careers. We've been honored in newspapers, we've been praised by administration, and we've been spoken highly of by more people than we can count. I know I speak for the graduates in front of you when I say that we hope that our achievements are worthy of the admiration that we have so far received. Since it is the season of celebrating hard work, dedication, and jobs well done, the class of 2018 would like to acknowledge a certain member of the staff here at Granville for their continuous excellence and determination to keep our athletes, coaches, and community at the top of their respective games. This individual has gone above and beyond for as long as we all can remember, and it only seems right that, we be honored, uh, that he be honored tonight in front of all of the thankful members of his community. Presenting their award is two-sport respected athlete Matthew Parker and three-sport Sam Epolito Award recipient William Duffy. He is the best groundkeeper in Section 2. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. Walt Bixby.
On behalf of the class of 2018, we have decided to donate the remainder of our class funds, which total to roughly $2,000, to the new school fundraiser in hopes of purchasing a Golden Horde statue for the school. Our class is kicking off this fundraiser by being the first to donate, hopefully being followed by many others. The statue is displayed on the sidewalk, as you can see over there, and we are happy to announce our class's contribution to this cause. Thank you to Mr. McGurl for jumpstarting the fundraiser for this monument, and thank you to the school for allowing us to express our spirit over the years. Thank you, class officers. Great job. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Thomas McGurl, who will deliver the superintendent's greeting. Good evening. It's a thought that the character, maturity, and outlook of the senior class determines how the entire school year will go. With this senior class, I'm happy to report that we've had a very good year. These students are individually and collectively an impressive group. Scholars, athletes, artists, musicians, each has contributed to the growth and ultimately the history and character of our school. At this time, if I could please ask the parents and guardians of the graduates to stand up. Audience participation time. You've assisted your children along what at times can seem like a very long road. As a parent, I can attest that raising children in this day and age is no easy task. I would personally like to thank you for your efforts and for a job extremely well done. You should not only be proud of your child, but also of what you have accomplished to get them to this day. Although you've already applauded, I think another one is in order. Thank you. You miss it. Soon to be graduates, thank you for being the wonderful people that you are, for contributing to our school, and for allowing me to share in your senior year. I truly look forward to hearing the great things about you well into our future. As you go out into the world, continue to work hard and never settle for mediocrity. When you choose to do something, strive to do your absolute very best at it. As you leave the confines of high school, you'll find many times you'll face a fork in the road. When you face that fork, you're going to be forced to make a choice. Weigh your options carefully. And even when it's the more difficult path, always do the right thing. If you're lucky, you'll have made the right choice. Celebrate your success and move forward because there'll be yet another choice just on the horizon. If you find that you made the wrong choice, relax. It happens to everyone. Learn from it, grow from it, and try again. That is life. Success inevitably comes with its share of failures. What you do with them is what's most important. Class of 2018, I congratulate you. I wish you nothing but the best in your future. As you go far and wide over the years, never forget where you came from and that you will always be a member of the Golden Horde. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGurl. Before I announce the award winners, I would like to thank the following people who made this ceremony possible. Class advisors, Mrs. Palmer and Ms. Cadella. Guidance counselor, Saunders Smith. Graduation advisors, Mrs. Becker, Ms. Becker, Mrs. Colombo, and Ms. Ramirez. Our instrumental band instructors, Ms. Everdyke and Mr. Brent Tuttle. My right hand man, uh, Daniel Poucher, assistant principal. And the custodial staff who worked very hard to set up for this ceremony. I would like to give special thanks to Heather Thomas, my administrative assistant, who put hundreds of hours into making this ceremony possible. She killed her computer the other day and had it be replaced. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank all of the people and organizations for their generous donations to the awards program. 
we will be giving out more than $52,000 worth of awards and gifts this evening. And that's fantastic for a community this size. Thank you very much. I would ask our students who receive these awards to express their gratitude to these people and organizations after they receive the awards. Please stand and be recognized after your name is called as a recipient. Your awards will be handed to you when you receive the diplomas. Here we go. <clears throat> the C&K Ellis Academic Achievement Award is awarded to Audra Quick. Please stand. Thank you. The Drusil Craig Memorial Scholarship, Sierra Ricks. The Legion Writers Squadron 323 Award, Fawn Chaplin. The Granville Lions Club Award, Tyler Waite. The Fred W. Davidson Memorial Masonic Award, <coughs> Dustin Evans. The Granville Lions Club Award, Sarah White. The Glens Falls National Award, Christian Burns. The Green Granville Chamber of Commerce Award, Gavin Van Buren. The Granville Meadowee Valley Senior Citizens Award, Michael Burns. <laughs> the June Laurie Memorial Award, Ashley Barron. The Richard A. Vogel Memorial Foundation Award, Robert Vernon. The FBLA Award, Cassandra McGraw. The Granville Meadow, Meadowee Valley Senior Citizens Award, Amber Stewart. The Meadowee Valley Ecumenical Council Capstone Project Award, Logan Baker. Stanley and Betty Gadalewski Memorial Scholarship and the Granville Central School Administrators Award, Elena Fabian. <laughs> Modern Woodman of America Award and the Vermont Quarry Music Award, Olivia Burnham. <laughs> Robert Garrity Memorial Music Scholarship and the Legion Writers Squadron 323 Award, Tristan Woodbury. <laughs> Granville Central S S School, Support Support School Support Staff Award, a lot of S's there, and the Granville Rotary Award, Justin Hebler. <laughs> Brian M. Douglas Memorial Scholarship, <laughs> Daniel Thomas Burrell Senior Scholarship to Jasmine Gates. <laughs> Margaret Minnelli, McNelly Memorial Scholarship, Hyman and Anna Berkowitz Scholarship, Brianne Greenall. <laughs> American Legion Daughter Award, David L. Fisher Music Award, Alexis Lehman. Meadowee Valley Speech Services Award, TD Bank Award, Caitlin Heal. <laughs> Arch R. Craig Memorial Scholarship, Washington County Children's Committee Scholarship Award, Victoria James. <laughs> Vermont Honor Scholarship, and the Matthew Parker Fisk Memorial Scholarship, Zachary Haskins. <laughs> American Legion Daughter Award, Raceville Methodist Church Award, Peyton Paquette.
John Falvey Sullivan Fringy VFW Post 1653 Americanism Award and Legion Writers Squad 323 Award Zachary Setchell. <laughs> Granville Areas Linus Club Lena May Taco Award, the Hyman and Anna Berkowitz Scholarship, and the Stanley and Bet Betty Gatlewski Memorial Scholarship, Brooke Buxton. Ed Martin Memorial Award, James Henry Byrne Scholarship, Sheldon Slate Products Company, Incorporated Athletic Award, William Duffy. Granville Central PTA Scholarship, Kyle Shaw Award, Modern Woodman of America Award, Gregory Desiato. <laughs> Citizens Bank Award, Stanley and Betty Gadlewski Memorial Scholarship, and Dr. Edward J. Kelly Scholarship, Mercedes Green. Granville Chamber of Commerce Award, Hyman and Anna Berkowitz Scholarship, Washington County Children's Committee and Scholarship Award, Joshua Fisk. <laughs> Carl W. White Scholarship, Mildred C. White Scholarship Award, Sheldon Slate Products Athletic Award, Brooke Perry. Deborah Tyler Memorial Award, Mildred C. White Scholarship Award, Hyman and Anna Berkowitz Scholarship, and the Spirit Club Scholarship, Cameron Ludwitkowski. <laughs> Brenda Smith Memorial Scholarship Award, John Falvey Sullivan Fringy VFW Post 1653, Pepper Williams Award, Stanley and Betty Gadlewski Memorial Scholarship, Modern Woodman of America Award, Matthew Parker. <laughs> Granville Teachers Association Scholarship, Granville Lions Foundation Award, Rollin Family Scholarship, Norton St. Gobain Good Citizens Award, Lily Hahn. Blue Shield Scholarship, Brian Tressler Memorial Scholarship, Coach Jan C. McPhee Scholarship, John Farley Sullivan Fringy VFW Post 1653 Americanism Award, the Osborne Service Award, Rollins Family Scholarship, and the Spirit Club Scholarship, Olivia Roberts. <laughs> Isidore Cobo Memorial Award, New York State Higher Education Services Scholarship for Academic Excellence, CNK Ellis Academic Achievement Award, Border Riders Snowmobile Club Award, Rollins Family Scholarship, New York State Correctional Officers and Police Benevolent Association Incorporated Award, and Modern Woodmen of America Award, Connor Lennox. Manchester Newspapers Award, New York State Higher Education Services Scholarship for Academic Excellence, D. and Ray Bergeron Salatorian Award, Stanley and Betty Gadlewski Salatorian Award, Livesey Free Family Scholarship Fund, Granville Rotary Club Endowment Fund Award, and the Raceful Methodist Church Award, Elizabeth Hicks. Ada B. Lurie Endowment Fund Award, the Arnold Paul Goff Award, Jesse Jordan Memorial Award, Simeon M. Rising Jr. Memorial Masonic Award, Albert Berkowitz Community Scholarship, Border Writers Snowmobile Club Award, and the Granville Lions Foundation Scholarship, Alex Birchmore. Granville Rotary Club, Lewis D. Goldberg Memorial Award, Norton St. Cobain Future Engineer Award, Singman Weinberg Scholarship Award, American Legion Americanism Award, 
Granville Lions Foundation Scholarship, Granville Rotary Club Endowment Fund Award, Vermont Quarry Association Award, and American Red Cross Scholarship, Jacob Vladica. The Douglas Prize GHS Class of 82 Scholarship Award, John Stachowski and Sons Incorporated Award, New York State Hy Education Services Scholarship Award for Ex Academic Excellence, Slate Valley Garden Club Award, Rollins Family Scholarship, Tri-County Women's Farm and Garden Award, and the Rutland County 4-H Scholarship, Abigail Armstrong. And finally, the Granville Rotary Club Louis D. Goldberg Memorial Award, the New York State Higher Education Services Scholarship for Academic Excellence, Sheldon Slate Products Incorporated Valley Victorian Award, Francis Foley Scholarship, American Legion American Government Award, the Livesey Freed Family Scholarship Fund Award, Granville Lioness Club Award, and the Stanley and Betty Galuski Memorial Scholarship, Kara G. Again, thank you for all the people that made, made all of these words, awards possible. At this time, I would like to introduce Kira G to deliver the Vela Victoria speech. Thank you for being here today to take part in this special moment of our lives. Instead of a traditional speech, I wrote a poem for this occasion, which I would like to share with all of you. <coughs> in doing so, I hope to take you on a trip, if you'll allow me. A trip to where the class of 2018 is right now, on the edge. Faculty and staff and administration and family and friends, we stand before you the graduating class of 2018. We are on the edge. If we step, we may fall. If we don't step, we may fall. Either way, we may fall. Where next, you ask? We don't respond. If we step, we may fall. It's not a long fall, you say, only the edge of high school. We've spent years preparing for this day. You have spent years preparing us for this day. And after midnight tears and daylight coffees and evening laughs and 10 a.m. Red Bulls, after broken pencils and cramping hands and pounding headaches and total frustration, after finished papers and weary smiles and crisp high fives and complete satisfaction, after 1,014,000 minutes under your wings, you think we're ready. It's not a long fall, you say again. But to us, it's an eternity. If we step, we may fall. <coughs> but we see what's waiting. We know it's there. We take a breath. We can do this. We tense our legs. We crouch. We ready ourselves. The time is now. And then someone takes away the light. If we step, we may fall. We can't see what's waiting. It's dark uncertain, scary, the real world awaits. At least, I think it does. We can't see the other side, but we still think it's there. But there are clouds in between and we can't reach it. If we step, we may fall. It's like when we were kids, small and alone in our rooms at night, afraid to let our fingers or toes dangle over the edge of our beds, lest they be grabbed by some unknown monster. I used to sleep with the covers over my head. My mom had to check the closet every night before I went to bed, and I always fell asleep with the lights on. I was afraid of the dark, of what I couldn't see. Now we stand together at the edge, afraid of what we can't see. But if we're frightened, at least we have each other. If we step, we may fall. 
It's like that first time we rode a bicycle, without training wheels, without help, scared of toppling over and landing on the road, with visions of skinned elbows and knees dancing through our brains, knowing that once we start, we have to keep pedaling, lest we topple over and make our visions of scrapes and bruises a reality. I have never been able to conquer that fear of riding a bicycle. I still don't know how. Every time I try, I let my fear of what might happen overpower my desire of what should happen. Now we stand together at the edge, in danger of letting our fears overpower our desires. Let us save ourselves and each other from that fate. Let us make our desires stronger than our fears. But if we step, we may fall. It's like waiting to perform in public, whether on the stage, in the classroom, on a field, in a stadium filled with 2,000 people, determined to step out into the spotlight, yet terrified of what might happen if we do, uncertain of what lies before us, but unable to return. No matter how many times I take the stage, stand at the front of the class, or step up to take a kick, I am always terrified right before I do. Now we stand together at the edge, afraid to move onward and unable to turn back. Yet, as someone much wiser than me once said, fear is a good thing. It means you're paying attention. If we step, we may fall. Our whole lives are behind us. Our whole lives are before us. We are here. Not a long fall, you said? Ha! Our whole lives have been leading up to this day. How could it be short? You reassure us that we can do it, and we appreciate that, we truly do, but silently we think that you're crazy. If we step, we may fall. Where next, you ask again? We roll our eyes. Of course you want to know where we are going, but we don't even know. How could we? We're on the edge. Some of us are fairly certain of our direction, so we tell you. Some of us only have a dream, and we tell you. And some of us have no idea, so we tell you that. There, satisfied? If we step, we may fall. It won't be easy, of course not. We are used to walking the same halls day after day, accustomed to seeing the same, same faces, saying the same names, making the same movements we have made for 13 years. We are creatures of habit, after all, resistant to change. But change we will, and change we must starting now. If we step, we may fall. A leap of faith, they call it, blindly, hoping. Offer it all and hope our feet land on the other side. Armed with the courage born of years of tackling seemingly insurmountable projects, <coughs> tempered with the resilience without which one cannot hope to complete high school, grounded by the strength without which we could never have completed our assignments, Sharp with the knowledge you have instilled in us for the past 13 years, bolstered by the memories we have made, sustained by the friends with whom we have made those memories, inspired by 1,014,000 minutes of hoping for this day, our feet will land, solidly, firmly. We may stagger a bit. We may reach out for your hand and ask you to help us find our feet. But then, <coughs> let go. Never abandon us. But, like us, but let us make our first steps on the other side, on our own. If we step, we may fall. And this step will start a new chapter of our lives. We must never forget, but we must move on. We must make new memories, forge new friendships, awaken our minds and souls and hearts in ways we can't yet imagine. As we go forward on the other side, let us seek out new cliffs off of which we can tumble. Let us always be grateful for what we have and where we are, yet never content. Let divine dissatisfaction motivate us to always dream bigger, reach higher, run farther than we think we can. This is our time, our lives. As we go forward, <coughs> we must never forget the tears and coffees and laughs and Red Bulls, the pencils and cramps and headaches and frustration the papers and smiles and high fives and satisfaction, the 1,014,000 minutes under your wing. We must never forget the terror we feel in this moment, poised on the edge of something new. But we must not let this terror incapacitate us. 
No, let it fuel our fire. Let this fear drive us to the other side and make this fall the very best of our lives. If we step, we may fall, and the world will feel our impact. Seventy-odd individuals lending separately, but together. Fearful, but determined. Passionate, but collected. Honest, compassionate, empathetic, understanding with love in our hands and hearts as we set out to change the world. If we step, we may fall. But we are all in this together. And so faculty and staff and administration and family and friends stand back. Class of 2018, reach out. Let's take each other's hands. If we step, we may fall. And so, let's jump. Now would everyone please rise and join me in singing the Granville Alma Mater, the words of which are located on the inside back cover of your programs. Where the rippling Indian <coughs> River joins the meadow there the sands this Alma Mater Right, good will. Ra, 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 the blue and gold forever. Ra, 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 Granville. Thank you, Kira. Outstanding speech, great delivery. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mrs. Audrey Hicks, president of the school board who will, will deliver the Board of Education welcome. Thank you. Kira, you're a hard act to follow. I'm not even going to try to keep up. Good evening, everyone. It is my honor to address you on behalf of the Board of Education. I have known the majority of you since kindergarten, a few of you even longer than that. You are an amazingly talented group of people whom we are proud to call our class of 2018. Congratulations to you all. I have struggled with which, word, which of the many words of wisdom I would like to share with you this evening and how to present these thoughts in a memorable way. So humor me and play along. Mr. McGurl has agreed to be my trusty assistant. And just to make sure that he's on task doing what I'm going to ask him to do, Logan Baker has agreed to come up and keep Mr. McGurl on task. All right. Go on the other side of him then. <laughs> okay. Mr. McGurl has two glasses. I'm going to fill one with water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Logan, do you agree that this glass is full? Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to ask Mr. McGurl to pour half of this glass into the empty glass. <laughs> okay. Now Logan's going to inspect and make sure that there's half in each one. Okay, so Logan, has he got half the water in one glass and half the water in the other? Well, a little bit on the floor, but yeah. Okay, so Logan, a question for you. Which, cla which glass is half empty and which one is half full? Yeah, you do. Go ahead. All right, so the one on in his left hand 
is going to be the one that is half full, I believe. And the one in his right hand is the one that is half empty. Because we dumped water from this one into that one last. <laughs> and that is a feasible explanation. However, if we didn't see what went on, how would you tell? Well, if you swapped them around, you, you probably would not be able to tell. Yeah, good answer. That would be very hard. Okay. Uh, actually, there's a scratch on that glass, so I'd be able to tell. <laughs> okay, thank you both. <laughs> Let's give the assistants a round of applause. They did, they did well. <coughs> okay, so as Logan pointed out, it's a little bit difficult to figure out which glass is half full and which glass is half empty if you didn't know. Clearly this is a matter of perspective as they both hold approximately the same amount of water. So both could be viewed as half full or as half empty. At any point in your life, some aspects will be going well and others not so much. It is up to you whether you view your present situation as the glass half full, thankful, for, hang on, <laughs> stuck together, um, thankful for the good and determined to work on the rest, or half empty, paralyzed by what is not going well, not giving yourself credit for what is. Whenever I get bogged down with negative thoughts, I try to remember to focus on the positive, which gives me the strength to face that which may seem insurmountable. Now, for the how-to part of these quote-unquote words of wisdom, which has three parts. Now, Jerry McKinney last night said there wouldn't be any more tests. Well, one more. Humor me again, please. <coughs> so listen carefully. On a daily basis, try to do the following. Do something for someone else, something that makes you think beyond yourself. Hold a door for someone with their hands full. Pick up some garbage that someone carelessly dropped. Reach out to someone who would like to hear from you. Mom and dad would be a good place to start with that one. Do some, and number two, do something that challenges you or that you are a little afraid to try. Something that will boost your confidence. Join a club, call on a job ad, introduce your someone, yourself to someone new. Hike a mountain that is out of your comfort zone. <coughs> and number three, do something for yourself. Something that makes you feel good, that refreshes you, that refills your cup. Go for a walk, a run, a bike ride, do yoga, lie in the grass and listen to music, take a nap, do whatever rejuvenates you. So in summary, in order to have the resources to give to others and to challenge yourself, you need to take care of yourself, to fill your cup. Then remember to rely on the fact that your glass is, al is always half full and never empty. My hope is that connecting a glass of water to these thoughts will remind you to use what you have going for you to face whatever challenges you may face. Now it's test time. What are you going to try to do each day? Repeat after me. Do something for someone else. Do something for someone else. Challenge myself. Do something for myself. So congratulations again. Enjoy all the fun that follows this ceremony, but please make wise decisions and stay safe. God bless and congrats. Thank you, Mrs. Hicks. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Daniel Poucher, who will do the presentation of graduates. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to read to you the list of the 2018 graduates. 
want to join us up in the back? Yes. Jeremy David Amaral. <laughs> Abigail Lynn Armstrong. <laughs> Allison J. Arnado in Abstentia. James Bacher in Abstentia. Justin Charles Baker. Logan Taylor Baker. Ashley M. Barron. Rochelle Lynn Bassett. Jamie Ann Beatty. Glenn L. Beebe III. Alex M. Birchmore. <laughs> Kelly A. Brill. <laughs> Frederick Miles Birch, Jr. Christian C. Burns. Michael M. Burns. Olivia Dorothy Burnham. Austin James Buxton. Brooke Elaine Buxton. Fawn Marie Chaplin. Brandon Conklin. Tyler Edward Decker. Gregory Robert Desiato. Aaron T. Dorr. William Matthew Duffy. <laughs> Dustin Edward Evans. <laughs> Elena M. Fabian. Joshua Gregory Fisk. Justin Fosmer.
Jasmine Royal Gates. Kira Lewis G. Mercedes Victoria Green. Brianne Catherine Greeno. <laughs> Lily Ann Hahn. Zachary James Haskins. Caitlin Rose Heald. Justin Julius Hebler. Christine Hermans. This is a special presentation. Elizabeth Murray Hicks, presented by her mother, Board of Education President Audrey Hicks. <laughs> Cecilia Iriando Size. Victoria Marie James. Robert J. LaCroix. Timothy William LaPointe. Alexis M. Lehman. <laughs> Preston Scott LaBelle. Yeah. Connor M. Lennox. Cameron Bradley Ludwikowski. Vera Wilma Mastriani Thomas. Edward S. Madison in absentia. Cassandra Jane McGraw. Dylan J. Merrill. Christopher David Panushik in absentia. Matthew David Parker. Peyton F. Paquette. Nathaniel Wayne Pierce. <laughs> A. 
Eric Ronald Picar. Chloe Louise Perkins. This next diploma is another special presentation. Good job, buddy. Brooke Laurel Perry, presented by her grandmother, Board of Education member Susan Perry. Haley Marie Prevost. Audra M. Quick. Sierra C. N. Ricks. Olivia Lauren Roberts. Ryan D. Roselle. Paige Elizabeth Russell. Dylan Saddlemeyer. Zachary Allen Setchell. Amber Brooke Stewart. Gavin Reese Van Buren. Robert Carl Vernon. This next diploma is another special presentation. Jacob Z. Vladica, presented by his father, Board of Education member Ed Vladica. <laughs> Caitlin Ann Wade. Tyler Thomas Waite. Sarah Grace White. Tristan Jacob Woodbury. Ladies and gentlemen, the list of the graduates of 2018. Now that you have all um, sat back down, would you all please stand? Mr. Palenci, have all the candidates for graduation met all the requirements set forth by the New York State Education Department and local regulations? 
By the power vested in me as president of the Granville Board of Education, I hereby declare you 2018 graduates of Granville Central School. Congratulations.